Hello all and welcome to this great day we've all been preparing and waiting for. The Formation Day Grand Finale Gathering. And as you all know, today is extra special because we are celebrating the feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we're going to do this in a very special manner. It's not going to be the usual performance or an event where you get to sit back and enjoy. Rather, it's going to be a journey. A journey that all of us participate in together. So here we have a small group who've gathered who will take part in this journey along with you and help you in giving cues to join in. And just like all of you are in your respective countries, we here, that is a small group who've gathered in the Jesus Youth International Studio, will be celebrating this journey along with you. And the reason why we're all here is to thank God for the lovely gift of the Formation Day. So whichever country you're in, let's start this journey as one big family together. As always, let's begin this journey by praising and thanking the Lord Almighty. We have a lovely group of musicians over here from the Jesus Youth who will be leading us in this prayer. It is such a beautiful thing to be together in His presence today. And as we come together, we are coming together not uh, as individuals, but we are also coming together as a family from around the world. There are different groups joining us and it is such a thrill to know that as a church, as a movement, we are coming together. And together let's celebrate this thrill of being a movement in Jesus. wonderful people and the reason why we're thrilled is that the Holy Spirit is in our midst and let us powerfully invite the Holy Spirit who's behind the entire movement and the entire formation of the movement and that's the reason why we've gathered here so let us invite the Holy Spirit into our midst let us ask the Holy Spirit to fall upon us in a new way in a fresh way let your spirit fall O Lord on us let your spirit come, let your spirit come, fall upon us now, fall upon us now. Let your spirit come, let your spirit come, fall upon us now, fall upon us now. Let the rain fall down. Come and make us whole. Come and make us whole. Let your spirit come. Let your spirit come. Fall upon me now. Fall upon me now. Oh, let your spirit come. Let your spirit come. Fall upon me now. Fall upon 
Just as Mother Mary's soul magnified the Lord, just as King David exhorted his soul to lift the name of God on high, today let us exhort our souls, let us tell ourselves that the reason for us being here is to bless the Lord. And let us look into ourselves in a deeper way and let us tell ourselves, Oh my soul, bless the Lord. And let us Sing together, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. surrounded and entrenched and tranced by your beauty I thank you Lord that you are around us and we are here before you because you have formed us to worship you and the very reason of our existence is to worship you and we bring ourselves before you here we are Lord from across the world from different places, here we come together, one in heart, to worship. Here, I am to worship. Together worthy, 
Lord, here we are, completely silent, with no words, we stand before you, bringing ourselves into your presence. Come and fill my heart, Lord of light and life. My soul is yearning for you, O God. Come and touch my life, take control of me. May every moment be completely yours. Come and fill my heart, Lord of light and life. My soul is yearning for you, O oh God. Come and touch my life, take control of me. May every moment be completely yours. Come and fill. Lord of light and light, my soul is yearning for you, O oh God. Come and touch my life, take control of me. May every moment be completely yours. May every moment. Yes, Lord, take complete control of our every moment, every hour, and our entire life. Because once again, we want to declare that you are the Lord of our lives. As a movement, as a church, as a group, we want to declare from the depths of our lives that Jesus, you are our King, you are our Lord, you are our Master. You are the truth, the light, and the life for this world. Jesus, truly, you are the Lord.
Jesus is the Lord. He's the Lord of all my heart. He's the way. He's the truth. something exciting. Let's listen to our brothers and sisters from across the globe share their inspiring stories about their formation journey. Jesus View Formation has been a wonderful blessing in my life and through it I've learned to become a better disciple of Jesus and I believe a better priest. In the Philip course I had my first profound encounter with the Holy Spirit and I began to learn what the charismatic renewal was all about. My eyes were opened to new horizons and I became convicted that a life in the Holy Spirit would be a life that would be much more powerful, exciting and led by the Lord. It was through the Paul course that I felt better equipped to proclaim the good news. Through the section on the Word of God, I learned the power of the Word in my everyday life. But it was not just a, an academic subject or something that I had to speak about on the weekend, but that it contained real power. Through the section on praise, I learned that I can praise God in all circumstances, which led to a much greater feeling of freedom and helped me to share this good news with others. And finally, testimony. That was, again, something very powerful as it helped me to bear better witness to Jesus. I'm currently undergoing the Emmaus course, and through this I'm learning again what it is to be a disciple, and I'm truly grateful for the bonds of friendship that have been strengthened through this 16-week course. As I said at the beginning, my heart has been filled with great hope as I've encountered the charismatic renewal, and I see more and more that I'm learning about the charisms of the Holy Spirit, and it was Jesus' youth formation that opened my eyes to this. I have a great feeling and conviction that God is going to continually to work powerfully in his church and throughout the world so that the good news can be proclaimed. And it's been Jesus' youth formation that has opened my heart and my eyes to see this, as I continue with great conviction along the journey of discipleship. The Philip course transformed my life completely. I let go of all the preconceived notions I had about who God is and how much he loves me. This paved a way for me to repent, turn to God and accept his grace in my life. I could see God working in every aspect of my life after the Philip course. He had taken control of the steering wheel and I was flying high. My career was improving. I got a job in the midst of a pandemic. Even my relationships with my family and friends had improved. I had made new friends in the Jesus Youth. The Paul course helped me anchor my feet in the six pillars of the Jesus Youth. I learned how to communicate with God in personal prayer, which was very important, as it now is a firm foundation in my faith journey. I am now part of the Emmaus study group and it is taking my faith from strength to strength. 
personal prayer and the sacraments are helping me walk in faith despite all the difficulties that I face. I now spend more time in prayer, more time in this Eucharistic adoration. From one Philip to the other, Lord has helped me to have that intimate relationship with him and he has helped me to deepen my love for him and to have that increase in faith to proclaim that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, first of all, it has helped me to grow in my own faith and understanding and also as an individual to grow better. Uh, the Philip course and the Paul course has helped me to uh, learn more about the fundamentals of my faith, how the salvation history works and how the charisma is uh, affecting my life. I also got to see how I can sustain in this faith through uh, the sacraments, the Word of God and personal prayer. In the Emmaus course, it had a lot of very uh, different and exciting modules, but my favorite ones were the life-oriented modules where they uh, teach you about self-discovery, uh, how to discern your vocation and to grow in your relationships and how to identify your charisms and your talents. It just, it just helped us so much to improve and, and, and the most beautiful part of formation is that it does not end with us attending a course. It just keeps on going. It is a journey. And when you're part of the study group and further, when you learn these sessions and when you are at a point where you have to deliver the sessions as well, you know, it just it just seeps into you slowly, 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 it starts seeping into you. Through this journey of study group that God has invited me to take, I was able to first and foremost put into a few things that I learned in the Paul course into practice. First and foremost is to be a person of thanksgiving and praise. Before I used to only look at the bigger blessings, the bigger events of life that were worthy of thanksgiving and praise. But today I can um, relate to the day-to-day -day household chores of just being able to uh, maybe cook, being able to clean the house and thank God for being able to do those little things which might seem insignificant. I know there is a lot, a long way to go before I'm able to thank and praise God for all circumstances of my life. The second area is my family shares that I have been a person of patience now. Given that before I found it very hard to show patience and let go of things, I used to easily get annoyed and upset when things didn't happen according to my plan. But now God is giving me that grace to grow in the virtue of patience. And the third area is I'm usually generally discouraged easily, especially in spiritual failures of life. I go down the guilt trip always. But now God is transforming me to be a person of hope to always look at that God is loving and caring, He is compassionate and He always wants me to get back and He is always willing me, willing to embrace me. Especially the session about the love of God has enlightened me and I was able to experience the depth in which God loves me, which I still carry closely in my life. Their own words, I was able to reflect that into my personal prayer and was able to experience a new level of God's love. This helped me to overcome many difficult situations, remembering that God loves me so deeply and He is always with me. I was so privileged that I got this uh, Word of God session to prepare uh, because it went deep into me and it helped uh, me to get more rooted in Word of God. I'm sure these experiences shared have been an eye-opener to many of us. Hope you had a good time of sharing. Now it's time to listen to a brief scripture reflection by our beloved father, Thomas Pulikil from USA. He's a priest ordained for the Jesus Youth Movement and is presently teaching in St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary in Florida. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Youth, today we celebrate our Formation Day. And it's my pleasure to share with you a brief reflection on Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. Before beginning, I'd like to put forward a simple reflective question, which is, how much importance do I give to my own formation? So Galatians chapter 4, verse 19 reads, My little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. And I'd like to highlight just three words from this verse. The first word is formed. Now, obviously, that's the reason why we've chosen this verse as our motto for formation. 
because that's what formation is all about. It's about Christ being formed in us, in our hearts and minds, in our actions, in our behaviors and attitudes, and in our deepest beliefs about the world, about ourselves. That's at the very heart of what it means to be a Christian. The second word I'd like to highlight is the anguish of childbirth, which in Greek is just one word, and it means to be in, to, to travail, or to be in the, uh, right in the middle of birth pangs. So if you were to ask yourself, what is St. Paul feeling as he's writing these words? Uh, well, he's not feeling very good, that's for sure. He's in a lot of pain, he's in anguish, because he's deeply disappointed at the direction which the Galatians have taken in their Christian journey. And that leads us to our third word, which is again, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth. Now, why would somebody need to go through the anguish of childbirth again after having already given birth? And I think that's St. Paul's kind of his point. You see, the Galatians had a wonderful start. They received the gospel in its fullness, I mean, we see that they had powerful manifestations of the Spirit. I mean, they had a very authentic Christ encounter. And yet, they went astray somehow. They were influenced by certain others who claimed to be super spiritual, uh, super Christian in a way, um, but they were out of sync with the authentic teaching of the gospel as interpreted by the apostles, by the church. And that's kind of what happens. Unless we receive authentic formation, it's just very easy to become malformed. Unless we have genuine guidance in our spiritual life, somewhere in the mix of our own ideas, our personal and moral struggles and the influences of others, we go astray. We can become lost. Almost 2,000 years ago, St. Paul thought that the formation of Christians was so important that it caused him to experience a pain akin to birth pangs. How much importance do we give to our own formation? How much do I prioritize my formation over and above many other things in my life? Perhaps today is a great day to take that question into prayer and to ask the Lord about that question. May St. Paul's desire that Christ be formed in us, be realized, especially in the lives of Jesus' youth. May God bless you all. Thank you so much, Father Thomas, for the thought-provoking reflection. It's amazing how thousands of Jesus' youth from across the globe have been making this formation journey together. So now, let us enjoy an overview of the Jesus' youth formation worldwide. Here's some exciting news. Our formation journey is going on in full steam and the much-awaited third phase of the formation journey is finally here. Let's take a preview of what all you can expect in phase three. Your attention, please. Hello, travelers. Welcome to a quick tour through the much-awaited third phase of the Jesus Youth Formation Journey. As you wait for the formation caravan, here are a few things you should know about Phase 3. To begin with, Phase 3 will be a hybrid experience. A part of it will be online and the other offline. Secondly, you will journey along with a group of loving friends in a mentor-accompanied cell. The journey will contain both personal reflections and sessions animated in groups. You'll definitely love each one of them. And finally, this will be an expansive and interactive journey 
through eight carefully chosen and crafted sessions around the theme Mission and Ministering. The sessions are titled The Biblical Mandate of Evangelization, Charismatic Ministering, Ministry of the Word, Living a Missionary Life, Charismatic Gifts in Mission, Ministering in the Power of the Spirit, Social Responsibility of Jesus Youth, and Jesus Youth Mission. Each of these eight modules will be unveiled to you through a fourfold process with video inputs, discussions, reflections, mentoring, and participant responses. The Formation Caravan is here to pick you up already. Don't forget to take your material backpack along with you. And happy journey! Welcome to the prep room. The first part is an orientation time of self-study, where you go through video or reading materials as you reflect and respond to questions. This will get you set for the next level. Now, after a week, you will be ready to step into the second part, the lounge of the caravan. Here you can join your friends in the cell group. As a cell, you will bond together virtually and watch the main 40-minute input sessions in two to three parts, followed by questions, discussions, and detailed assignments. Enough to keep you busy and excited. After around two weeks, you will realize that you have come a long way and it is about time for a stopover. It's a caravan park. Here, your cell group is set to meet other cell groups who have been making the journey in caravans along with you. It's time for some joyous fellowship. This is where all of you can get into the practical aspects of what you've been learning. In the gathering of cells, you can discuss and practice all of these in larger groups. Two weeks after the refreshing stopover, you're back among friends in the cell group and now with a mentor. This is where you build yourselves up and form each other as you near the pinnacle of our tour. Meanwhile, besides the aspect of learning and formation, your journey will have a different facet designed around exercises that inculcate consistent good habits in areas of human and spiritual values ranging from intimacy and relationships to fellowship and chastity. Each spiritual and human value will cover specific 20 to 30 day daily reflections so that lasting habits are formed across this journey. Once the formative meetings are over and your assignments done, you've completed your journey and arrived at the pinnacle of phase three. So let's thank God for his graces and get set to go even further. Looks like third phase is going to be pretty exciting. Now, let's take a look at a compilation of inspiring testimonies about formation from different parts of the world. Let's give it a listen. I'm really so delighted in uh, learning more to pray with the Word of God. And I was more impressed also by the facilitators uh, sharing of the different experiences and how they were spirit-filled. Outstanding of uh, all the different things that uh, we had in the different sessions was the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise touched me a special way because it helped me to appreciate the use of the Word of God in our divine office that we use for our morning prayers, our evening prayers, prayers during the day, and even the office of reading. But more important still, I came to relate the sacrifice of praise with the holy sacrifice of mass. I really highly recommend this course of uh, Paul, of St. Paul, to be used for the youth in Uganda because I find it so rich, because it helped me in my life to deepen my faith even more, in spite of being a bishop, but I was so helped by this course, Paul. And I would therefore uh, recommend it that to be used uh, on many occasions whenever the youth are being uh, oriented towards the deepening their spirituality. Because there are so many elements, especially. Uh, the stress of the Word of God, praying with it, and so on. Formation has helped me a lot in my life, both spiritually and personally, especially on the session on the Word of God. Few years back, I was going through a very difficult situation. 
I was looking for my life partner, but it was not easy. A lot of pressure from my family, friends, relatives, society, and it was not easy to handle. But then I started to read and meditate on what I've got. The situation remained the same, but my perspective towards the situation started changing. I was able to see light and darkness. Praise God, I got married in 2020, July 8th. Formation has helped me to follow Christ in a closer way. Praise God. Over the years, one of the sessions which touched me mostly is a life of thanksgiving and praise. This session gave me an immense understanding about why I should be thankful to God for all the little gifts He has given me and all the blessings He has showered upon me over these years. The last couple of years has been quite challenging for me personally and professionally. Tough situations at work, not so easy deadlines, difficult people to work with, not so easy situations at home. What kept me going all through these difficult times and challenging times was the hope and the spiritual strength and courage which which I learned and gained through the formation process. Formation process taught me how to read the Word of God, how to find comfort in the Word of God, how to receive sacraments more effectively, and how to pray. And Paul Coase played a key role in my personal formations and helped me to grow more in Christ. Philip Coase, a beautiful ghost, enabled me to enjoy the unconditional, real, and personal love of the Father almost in all aspects of life. Also, it strengthened me to witness Him in all possible ways, wherever I go and whatever I do. During Paul course, I was fully moved by the sessions on Word of God. It was so helpful to know and see Jesus as a Word of God. And now, through the daily readings, I feel like touched by Him. When I look back at the last two years, I can see how much I've grown in um, my own prayer life, um, how much I've grown in praying with the Word of God, um, and and all that is you know so much because of the graces that uh, I have received through the the prayer time during st uh, during study group. I had a pretty special bond with my father. I was really close to him. I used to run to him in any sort of decision making, be it in the clothes that I wear, uh, the food that I would like to eat, everything. He was everything to me. He passed away a few years back. And the second thing about myself is I have a pretty inconsistent prayer life. There are times where my personal prayer, my Bible reading um, is all at the peak and it's like that for a month or two and then dips down. Something beautiful I cherish about Philip Coase is the session on God the Father. For someone like me who misses my dad a lot, this session had a very beautiful impact on my life. I started calling on God for every teeny mean thing that I had. Um, be, it, be it in every small daily daily decisions that are to be made. We are having our study groups. Uh, sometimes uh, it takes more than four hours. Uh, sometimes the same place in front of the Zoom. We are having more than four hour sessions, we have more than discussions. But we have never felt tired or boringness uh, in our study groups. I think that is because of the uh, beautiful content that we are sharing. So uh, it's helping and it's nourishing us a lot. I remember uh, when I attended the Paul course, I had just recently qualified as a um, teacher. And as with any job, I'd find myself very overwhelmed, getting used to the routines and the people and the students. And on occasions, I'd feel so overwhelmed that I couldn't focus on anything else. And on one such particular um, week, um, I was feeling so overwhelmed. And that weekend, I attended the Paul course. And there, I remember the resource person um, sharing um, the Bible verse. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall forever be on my lips. And I remember going back to school the next week and in all situations, um, in the difficult conversations that I'd have, in um, the many the little stresses that would come up, offering it all up as a sacrifice of praise and repeating that Bible verse that I'd learned. And I'd find that in all these situations, the Lord would always bring a sense of peace, his divine peace that surpasses all understanding into my heart at that moment. It's been such a blessing, so many things that I remember like, you know, formation for me was not just a weekend thing or not just a one day a week thing. It was more like a daily thing for me. So 
in that sense i really am blessed to look at my past four years of being involved in formation and it's just been such a journey for spiritual formation human formation and even just like in general like just like a joy to be working and an honor to be a part of such a team um, and to really allow the Lord's, um, the movement's uh, formation material and the, the Holy Spirit to really form us in the way uh, through this formation. That was quite heartwarming. Our dear Bishop, Ma Rafael Tatil, Bishop of Shamshaba Diocese and International Ecclesiastical Advisor of Jesus Youth Movement, will now talk to us about the role of Mother Mary in forming missionary disciples. On the occasion of the Feast of Immaculate Conception of Mother Mary, I feel very much proud and privileged to send you greetings of blessings to Mother Mary from heaven. It was on 8th December 1854, Pope Pius XI declared the dogma of Immaculate Conception. Through this dogma, Holy Father very clearly and emphatically said, Mary, from the moment of inception till assumption to heaven, remain holy without sin. And the feast of Immaculate Conception is a challenge before us to be authentic, to be pure, to be holy. We are born with ordinary sin. But at the same time, we can live without sin. And Mother Mary very clearly and emphatically tells and invites us to be a life of holiness. We are missionaries of, of Jesus and we are at the service of the church. And every mission work is a work of authenticity. It's a work of credibility. What is this authenticity? No gap, no space between word and work, life and witness. My dear friends, we shall be authentic witnesses and missionaries at the service of the church, as individuals, as families, as a missionary movement. On 11th February 1858, Mother Mary appeared in the grotto of Luz to Bernadine. She asked, Who are you? Mother Mary with a smile said, I am Mother Mary, the Immaculate Conception, and said to pray, to do penance, to live holy, so that you shall become an authentic witness of my son Jesus and every Jesus youth member is called to be a missionary to be authentic to be holy to be credible by our prayer by our penance let us try to build the kingdom of God like Mother Mary, who traveled the hilly regions of Ain Karim with the haste. May God bless you, my dear Jesus Youth friends, through Mary from heaven. I bless you and wish you the best. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your anointed message. Let us join our hands in prayer before the heavenly patroness of formation, Mary Queen of the Apostles. Mary, Queen of the Apostles, pray that every Jesus youth be transformed by the power of Pentecost and sent forth to be true missionary disciples of your Son, Jesus. We are now entering the final few moments of this program. Let us now quieten our hearts and prepare ourselves to invite Lord Jesus into our midst. Jacob Joos, a member of the International Formation Team, will guide us into this adoration. Do make sure you have your candles and lighters with you. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Jesus. 
Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up. a king. He is enthroned on our praises. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. We praise you, Lord. With everything that we have, Lord, we bring all of us, everything that we have before you as an offering. Father, you redeemed us you picked us up from the pit of wretchedness and sin thank you Lord we are made strong by you by your sacrifice on the cross Lord we adore you you are our rock Lord and our salvation here we come into your presence, O oh God. Into your presence, Lord, we come. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, O oh Lord. presence that's where I belong seeking your face touching your grace in the cleft of the rock in your presence oh God in your presence Oh God, 
in your presence, O oh God, in your presence, O oh you love us in response to your love Lord we want to sing out a song Lord Jesus we love you Lord we want to say each one of us from, our, from the bottom of our heart we want to say we, we love you and we want to mean it, Lord. Every word of it. We love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I live my life. receive our candles Jesus said if you love me you will obey my commandments and his command to us is to go go to the ends of the world as Jesus youth we are called to go out as missionary disciples with the lighted candle in our hands let's make a pledge to Jesus you may please repeat after me Lord Jesus Lord Jesus just as the candle that shines in my hand just as the candle that shines in my hand the spirit shines within me the spirit shines within me your unconditional love your unconditional love compels me compels me to be like you to be like you may christ be formed in me may christ be formed in me I pledge my willingness, 
I pledge my willingness to be formed to be, to be formed by you by you by the gift of the Jesus youth formation by the gift of the Jesus youth formation send me to the ends of the world send me to the ends of the world to be a missionary disciple to be a missionary disciple in your service in your service and at the service of your people and at the service of your people lord Here we are. We want to go, Lord. We want to respond to your call, O oh Lord. We want to say we are ready. Yes, Lord. Our soul is ready, Lord. Our spirit is ready. Here we are. I who made the stars of night I will make the darkness bright Who will bear my light to them Whom shall I send Here I Let's put off our candles. Let's receive the final blessing. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood Help us to experience the salvation won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
sacrament most holy, the sacrament of the wine. All praise and adoration be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow, in the flow, flood the nation, the grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let This beautiful day has now come to an end. All the reflections, the testimonies, the inspiring messages and the prayers chanted together have truly made this day a wonderful day to cherish. And we are especially delighted to have experienced this journey with each and every one of you from across the globe. And as we gear up for the third phase of the formation, I wish you all a blessed Advent season and a Merry Christmas in advance. God bless.